He grew up in St. Paul, and he had a dream. Like so many that attend Creighton Durham Hall High School, he wanted to be a baseball player, like a Hall of Famer before him named Paul Molitor. I was all lined up to be the next Paul Molitor uh, out of Creighton High School. In ninth grade, I uh, pretty much missed everything going between my legs at practice. And uh, Coach Denning sat me down after I got cut, and you know he was my homeroom teacher so for four years. So they got a different years. plan for you? Yeah, he said different plan. He's from my neighborhood, West 7th yeah. Street. Coach Denning is, and he's still my good friend, and we still do breakfast. And, and uh, he sat me down, he said, you know, you're, you're talented, just not between the lines. Thus began a new journey and a new purpose. Joe Gallagher started producing live events, and he started it in the 80s, working rock and roll concerts. I uh, started with a rock and roll company in the 80s and 90s, and uh, it was hardcore event production. You learned a lot, you know, I really did, and you learned fast. But the kid who grew up loving sports would not let go of that dream, and his break into the big time came across the river on a national stage in Minneapolis when the 1994 NBA All-Star Game showed up and the fan experience became his baby. Our rock and roll company was hired to help uh, facilitate the uh, production of the NBA Jam Session, and after that, Maxie, I went to 18 of them, 18 years of NBA work. That would change his life. He became the author of the annual jam session at the All-Star Game, but it became bigger than that because the NBA was going global and Joe Gallagher was in the perfect place to take the ride. We went down with the NBA jam session in Mexico. We opened up the markets in Europe uh, and there we were traveling, producing fan festival events for David Stern and the NBA. You know, it was fun working with uh, Europeans. It was fun working in Latin America. Uh, 2004, the China games, you know, second to none. You know, China, I just read about, you know, the only thing I knew about China was when Nixon went in and, in uh, the 70s and to actually physically be able to go there with our company, it was, it was unbelievable and all based out of St. Paul, Minnesota. This is someone who appreciates that field. His basement looks the part of a man who lives his passion for sports. He is a committed collector which means he has some interesting artifacts from his alma mater. Cretan guy, you gotta have a tribute to Joe Maurer. Gotta have one Cretan case, yeah. This is the 09 Joe Maurer case. Uh, fortunate enough to acquire Joe's uh, game gear from 2009. All the bases, uh, or I'm sorry, all the baseballs pertain to 2009 season. Um, and then a base, opening day base from 2009. And then uh, one of Joe's bats from 2009 also. How does one get an all-star game met off the field? You know, you gotta be diligent. You know, you gotta, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta know the right people. Yeah, huh? there you go. Yeah, that is the uh, National League uh, circle from the uh, 2014 all-star game at Target Field. That's pretty cool. That's pretty fun. Yeah, what's your wife think of this room? Uh, she thinks it's uh, kind of crazy. He's not looking to move this merchandise, won't find it on eBay or Craigslist. He just collects what makes him happy, what brings back memories. And Joe, the, uh, Bobblehead Craig's not lost on you. No, you this know. This is about four teams worth. Yeah, and I've got more even too, but uh, yeah, we've got all the newer ones and you know, went after a few of the older ones, but some people garden, I guess I collect bobbleheads. What's the value in these if you wanted them? You know, I don't know because I've never sold. You you're know? not a seller, you're not a, a seller. Buyer. Yeah, yeah, just a buyer. And he has the opportunity to meet some of those players, becoming friends with the late and legendary Ernie Banks. One of the people you became close to over the years, the late Ernie Banks, how did that evolve? You know, it evolved, uh, his wife Liz wanted to produce an event over in Dubai uh -huh. for the 500 hitters, all the home run hitters over 500, and we had just produced an event over in Dubai with the National Basketball Association. So I met her in LA and became friends with uh, Liz and Ernie, and uh, the four years prior to his death were just magic whenever I would meet him and go out to dinner with him or go out to lunch. But if there's a highlight to his three plus decade career of international travel, it came in his own backyard. When the Ryder Cup arrived in Minnesota in 2016, and he was part of the company that produced the opening and closing ceremonies. There was a lot of moving parts. You know, backstage was, you know, it's almost like controlled chaos backstage, getting all the players to the That's right That's the way mark. it has to be to pull it off, There's right? no other way. There is no other way. No other way, and you have two F-16s. And then you just pray that it doesn't rain. That's a, oh yeah, we only talk about the weather, yeah. right? Yeah, because we had rain uh, all the way through, but we had two F-16s that made the mark right at the end of the national anthem. Because of an international stage, he was there, participating in the event that helps define a sports world in many ways. It means everything. You know, I've worked Super Bowls, NBA All-Star Games, Major League Baseball All-Star Games, to see the Europeans' fans 
meld with the American fans and what we just experienced with Minnesota. It's just, it's, it's, it's a, a sports stage that I've never seen before or witnessed and it's just phenomenal. Yes, the enthusiasm you can feel in his voice is real because Joe Gallagher is real. Just a guy who grew up on West 7th Street and wanted to do something special with his life. He surpassed what he thought was possible. Yeah, the Ernie Banks, the all-star locker rooms, you know, the, the all-star games, the countries, you know, when you grew up on Baird Avenue in St. Paul, Minnesota, and uh, you have eight kids in the family, and your dad worked many hours, and your mom kept the whole family out of jail, you know, and making sure we were doing the right thing, uh, you know, and then you go to do what you do, you really are proud. Life to the Max is brought to you by Life Touch, photography for a lifetime.